SSOPs are specific steps that are taken to perform the sanitation type tasks, including details of the sanitation procedures, but also how often they need to be done. But sanitation can also cover lots of other different areas of an operation as well, from employee practices like hand washing to maintenance of the building and the facilities, but also pest control um, in addition to the cleaning procedures. Well, proper sanitation is essential to safe food handling practices, um, including programs such as HACCP. Um, the complete sanitation process will certainly reduce the numbers of bacteria and viruses that could be present on equipment and utensils um, and cause a wide variety of illnesses. Having a standard procedure for how any of these sanitation procedures are conducted will help to ensure that they're done, done properly, and done consistently. It assists with training employees on the right way to do things. SSOPs are part of the foundation for more specific programs such as HACCP. You can't control a specific hazard with a HACCP plan if you have a facility that can't ensure something as basic as good sanitation. Food equipment that isn't properly cleaned and sanitized can obviously leave spoilage bacteria that at a minimum can cause poor quality product and reduce the shelf life of your product. Um, but certainly control of food allergens is an emerging risk in food processing operations as well. If a food contact surface is not properly cleaned in between handling of different kinds of foods, food proteins can be carried over to the next food, and we call that cross-contact, possibly causing an allergic reaction in the person that eats it. At the very extreme, dirty equipment can harbor pathogenic bacteria, bacteria that can cause foodborne illness and cause people to become ill. It could also force a food recall, and that can happen even at the retail food level. Um, from that, the firm could become involved in a lawsuit, which results in huge costs to the firm and could even cause them to go out of business. And if you're an employee there, that could mean the loss of your job. For the most part, the Minnesota Food Code really doesn't have any specific requirements for written SSOPs, or at least not called that thing specifically. One exception is that the fir if the firm conducts a specialized process called reduced oxygen packaging, and vacuum packaging is one type of reduced oxygen packaging, the code does require them to have written procedures for cleaning and sanitizing, although the code doesn't specifically call it SSOPs. However, even though the code doesn't have specific requirements, the code does have specific duties that the person in charge must ensure. Things such as making sure that employees wash their hands properly and at the proper times, that food contact surfaces are properly sanitized, and that employees with specific illnesses or symptoms are excluded or restricted. Additionally, the certified food manager rule has specific duties that the certified food manager at a firm must comply with. Some of those things include identifying hazards within the operation, developing and implementing policies and procedures to control those hazards, directing the food preparation activities, and taking corrective actions if necessary. It also requires the certified food manager to periodically conduct in-house self-inspections to ensure that the policies and procedures that they've developed are followed. So even though the rule doesn't specifically call them SSOPs, in essence what all of those requirements are, are SSOPs. As was said earlier, at a minimum SSOPs should say what items are to be cleaned and sanitized, how they're to be cleaned and sanitized, including the appropriate chemicals to be used, and also the frequency of cleaning. So is that something that's done daily, or does it need to be done more often than that? The primary concern would be for any food contact surface on equipment or utensils, but that could also be expanded to other parts of the equipment and then to the facilities as well, floors, walls, and ceilings. Um, how often that those areas are cleaned, uh, the outside walls of a cooler, for example, as opposed to a cutting board. To expand the concept of SSOPs even more means that they could include employee practices like hand washing or hygiene factors like eating, drinking, or use of tobacco. SSOPs could also include basic food handling procedures that are universal to a safe food operation. Things like having specific storage requirements for raw or ready-to-eat foods, keeping coolers running at a maximum temperature of 41 degrees or less, 
and that all employees are to wear gloves when handling ready-to-eat foods, or maybe that all food products are dated and rotated. Proper storage, labeling, and use of chemicals is another area that's basic to safe food handling operation. A final area is pest control. Whether the store or the restaurant hires a professional pest control firm or does the monitoring and pest control on their own, the presence of pests and the pathogens they carry can't be underestimated. Well, technically anything, any practice that is specific to a certain product or a process shouldn't be included in SSOPs, but probably is more appropriate to a HACCP plan. For example, uh, stating that you will cook chicken to 165 degrees or more, or if you're making summer sausage and the smoking and cooking process needs to go to 155 degrees. Those are really critical control points that are specific to that process. So that really doesn't fall under the concept of SSOPs. Knowing what should be included and also the detail to which the SSOPs should be written. Another problem I see is that there is an adequate follow through on the part of managers or owners to ensure that the policies and procedures they've developed are followed. They need to properly train all the employees so that they're part of a food safety team. Employees that understand the importance of all these requirements are more likely to want to do things the right way. Also, ask your inspector for input on your SSOP development and also ask them to give input on how well your system is working. Monitoring is an important part of any food safety system. How do you know things are being done properly or that they're under control unless you watch or check or observe people doing things? You should establish specifically what you want to check or watch or observe, how you're going to do it, when or the frequency, and finally, whose responsibility, who is going to do those things. So as an example, if you're going to do follow-up on the sanitation of a specific piece of equipment, you could say that the deli manager will check or look at the slicer each morning to make sure that it has been fully cleaned and that there isn't any food residue left there. You would also want to be sure that the person that's doing the dishes is properly using the three-compartment sink or the dish machine and that the sanitizing step is being achieved by using a test kit to check the concentration of a chemical sanitizer. That could be done by the certified food manager or it could be done by the person that does the dishes, say when they first fill up the, the bins on the sink. Monitoring can be something as simple as just watching employees. Do they wash their hands properly? Are they wearing gloves when they're supposed to? Of course, it's also important that when you check something or observe employees and things aren't going right, that there's corrective action taken. So corrective action is kind of a next step. And the corrective action needs to be initiated right away. If you see an employee doing something wrong that could be a source of contamination, you need to address that right away. Do employees know or recognize that there is a problem? And do they know what to do to correct the situation? And do they understand why it's a problem? I'm a firm believer that knowledge is power, and the more that they know, more likely that they are to do a good job and do things right. If something keeps going wrong, then the managers or the certified food manager may need to rewrite the SSOPs so that it's more clear or need to do additional training with employees so that they do do pro things properly in the future. And really the final component to a complete set of SSOPs is to have records of what's been done. The record should cover what you did for monitoring and then any corrective actions that you took. For example, you might have a daily checklist show, to show areas that need to be inspected. The record or form that's used could be simple or should be simple and fit into the routine of the operation as much as possible. Anything that's too complex will make it more likely that employees won't fill it out or won't do so in a truthful manner. Records show managers, owners, or corporate personnel what was done at the facility and gives them assurance that the operation is being run safely. On the other hand, it can show them where there are problems at a facility and where additional emphasis needs to be placed, either on a specific process or with the training of their staff. The goal or the purpose of SSOPs should always be to make the operation better and to obviously ensure that safe food is being produced. If the situation should ever arise where the operation would need to defend their practices in court, 
good standard or operating procedures, and I usually say that that needs, means that they should be in writing, and good records, written records of what was done can go a long way to support their case or defend themselves. Well, SSLPs really need to be specific to any particular operation. Um, so they really are going to be different for every facility, or potentially they could be different for every facility. Um, for different kinds of operations, equipment, will be, equipment that's used will vary from operation to operation in different types of establishments, especially from a bakery to a deli. And, of course, the products that are produced are different. But really good sanitation practices are universal to all kinds of facilities. Um, other things that could change SSOPs from one operation to another might be the hours that they're open or the number of employees that they have. If it's a small operation and you have only two employees to do a job as opposed to a bigger operation where you have multiple employees, obviously that gives you the ability to do more things. There are some other tools out there that can really help a firm to evaluate their effective, the effectiveness of their sanitation standard operating procedures. One of those tools is something that's called bioluminescence. And there are also other swabbing type methods. So bioluminescence means that you would take a swab of a surface that has been cleaned. And through relatively simple and short time periods, it can show if a surface truly is clean or if there still is food residue. And these kinds of situations are not going to show pathogens specifically, but just if it's dirty or clean, at least um, relative to other swabs that you take in the facility. Another way to do that is through third-party audits, where you would have another independent company come in and evaluate what you're doing in the facility. And they may also do some of this swabbing or they could even be doing specific analysis for certain pathogens, um, kind of as, again, a triple check of what you're doing within your facility. Many of the food recalls that we see occur due to sanitation problems in a facility, and that can be from a retail operation to a restaurant to a food manufacturing facility. Listeria can be a real problem for facilities that produce ready-to-eat food and that's obviously most restaurants or delis. Dirty food contact surfaces or even facilities, floors or ceilings, or a cooling unit in a walk-in cooler can all be sources of that bacteria, listeria, which then can be transferred onto a food. This is a problem when the food doesn't go through any other cook step before it's consumed. Products that are especially vulnerable are lunch meats like sliced turkey or any products that are made from those lunch meats, like a sandwich or a turkey spread. Salad items or seafood products can also become a common source of listeria and cause illness.